Good morning, welcome. So Parshas Kitaitze, 1991. We're finishing the Sikha over here. Good morning, everybody. And welcome. Hosefa Miuchadet Bagarin is that the Rebbe saying in our generation there's something very additionally ex exceptionally special. She'er Shabbat Zeh Mishetach Be'er Shabbat Echad Be'er Shabbat Uviyom Gimah Gimater De'echad Elul Uviyom Anisuin De'kot Kedushat Morecham Miyadmon Nesidoreinu Ulifnei Zeh Be'er Mavi Kam Yishabbat Be'er Shabbat Yit'alaf Olu Uviyom Anisuin Shel Aviv Kodot Kedushat Mori Admor Nishmuto Ha'agana Hashem Shemamalai Mekomo Hu Ben Yichido Kodot Kedushat Mori Be'er Shabbat Be'er Shabbat so there's a few days in the Chabad calendar, or it's the Jewish calendar, that are uh, special because there's some special things that occurred. And the 13th of Elul is the wedding day, which is the day I think that I was speaking over here, um, is the wedding day of the previous Rebbe with his, right, with his wife. And also the, the, the 11th of Elul, which is coming up next week, Monday is the 11th of Elul, is the wedding anniversary of the previous Rebbe's father, the, the Rebbe Roshah, and, um, and his wife. And then the 15th of Elul, which is the 15th of Elul next week also, I believe it's on, on Thursday, next week Thursday will be the 15th of Elul. We could look it up. Is the 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 day that the establishment of the Shiva Tom Mimim, okay, and it was also during the Shavu of the of the you know the anniversary of the wedding day of the previous Rabbi and the Rebbe Rashab, like we said, and um, of the Rebbe Rashab. It was the third day of again the third day of the Shavu of the the Friedrich Rebbe was the day that they established the. Yeshiva's Tom Chetrim, the first Chabad Yeshiva ever to be established on the 15th of Elul. So, so that was going to speak more about wedding, marriage. Like we said before, a wedding, we're getting ready for a wedding, are the Jewish people marrying Hashem, so to speak, it's the unity of the Jewish people with Hashem that's going to be in times of Mashiach completely revealed. What happens when we have a wedding, each and every Jewish person? Even the Rebbe says a personal you know, wedding. It's all connected. That's why a wedding is so special, right? We wish it's not just a personal event. It's connected with the, the wedding of a, the Jewish people with Hashem in times of Mashiach. And um, the Rebbe brings a footnote 114 over here that it says explained in the Maimar Samach to Samach that was told that was given over in the Sheva Brachas of, I guess, the previous Rebbe, that the whole purpose of getting married and having children is reveals the power of the Ein Sof, the unlimited power of Hashem in the world. When you give birth, you're, you're tapping into that energy of the unlimited power of giving, of procreating something from nothing and keep going, the, the creation of the world keeps going. So this is similar in a preparation to the revelations of the light of the angels of the unlimited lights of Hashem in the times of Mashiach. So marriage has something in it, the, the giving birth and having children has in it something of the continuation and the revelations of this unlimited light of Hashem in the world. Okay, so that's footnote 114. And let's continue in the text. Therefore, that we finish the Sheva Brachas with the Brachas, right? The Sheva Brachas are, we're saying blessings on the marriage. And the last Sheva Bracha is about Meher Yishama Bayed of Chuzes We mentioned that soon we should hear in the in the ear, in the, ear, the cities of Yehuda and the outskirts of Yishlaim, the, the sounds of, right, the voices of the, of the, of the, of the, of the happy voices of the, of the Chasen and the Kala. The bride and the groom. And see who I call, especially when we're celebrating the marriage of the Rebbe, the leader of the generation. Especially since they are the leaders of the Chassidus Chabad, teachings of Chabad, which reveal the inner dimensions of Torah, but often in a way that we can understand them with our brain, our human brain. And they're taught in a way that we spread them out to the whole world. Through them, we receive and we, re we reveal Mashiach. 
So welcome, Anasara. We missed you, by the way. And welcome, Chava. We missed you too. So we're going to finish, um, God willing, we're going to finish the, um, the Sicha of the, the, the Rebbe's way of preparing for, for Geula, I should say, and for um, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, which is all, and welcome Sherry, I see Sherry, you also came, so I didn't see everybody and didn't greet you. So welcome Sherry, good to have you. So we are getting ready for the most exciting events coming up, which is, uh, on Yom Kippur is the Jewish people, it says, are marrying Hashem. Geula in general is considered Jewish people marrying Hashem, and on this, on, on the 11th, which this week, this year comes out on, I believe comes out on a Monday. And on the 13th, which will come out, I guess Wednesday. Yeah, the 14th at night would be uh, Wednesday night. These are all special days, they're anniversaries. The, the 11th is anniversary of one of the Chabad Rabbis, the 13th of his anniversary of one of the Chabad Rabbis, and the 14th at night, which is the 15th, Wednesday night, Thursday. It's um, it's the day that the previous, that the, it was Sheva Brachas for the previous Sheva, and the Rebbe Rashab, his father, established the Yeshiva Tomchit So we have all these exciting events coming up, okay, things to look forward to. And they're all, the Rebbe says, these events are connected in general to the Geula, because the whole concept of marriage is revealing Hashem's unlimited light through procreation and revealing Hashem's unlimited power in the world. So, through having children. Okay, so, so each and every Jewish person, when they get married, it's very connected to the general marriage of the Jewish people with Hashem, which, reveal Hashem, which reveals Hashem's unlimited lights. Now, now, okay, so now let's go on. So there's, there's, we was going to put more emphasis on the fact on the, the, the marriage of the previous Rebbe, <clears throat> who the Rebbe calls the Nasi Doino, the leader of our generation. And in continuation to his marriage, he had, on the 11th, uh, right, he had the, um, they had the founding of the Yeshiva Satam Chait Bimim on the, no, his marriage was on the 13th. Yeah, which one was I getting mixed up here? Um, the 13th was, yeah, was the Frida Gerber's. Yeah, the 13th was the Frida Gerber's uh, wedding anniversary. The 11th was the Rebbe Shab's wedding anniversary. Okay, so when the Frida Gerber got married um, on the 13th, um, and then during the Sheva Brachas, they founded the Yeshiva Tom Chet Mimim. So the Rebbe goes into speaking now about this Yeshiva, yeshiva Tom Chet Mimim, which I had the merit of learning with Rebbe Zernanis, who was, he was a student in this Yeshiva. Okay. <laughs> he was born in 1897. He passed away in 1997, my teacher. So I knew him in, his, in the 80s. And up until he passed away, but um, and he came actually. He came when he was in his nineties. He came to visit me in America, in my shlichus. So after I gave birth. So so okay, I'm pretty old now. You, you can see how old I am. <clears throat> anyway, so he was in the Sishiva Tomchitimim after it was founded. He was one of those students who actually heard Chassidus from the Rebbe Rashab. So it's not so long ago who we're talking about. And the Friedrich, when he came to the Yeshiva, the Friedrich Rebbe was a young man who was actually doing the intake of the Bachrim. And it's a whole story because my teacher, Blaise Anas, wasn't planning to stay. He didn't really want to go to Yeshiva. <laughs> he was planning, he had plans to actually continue. I'll tell you the story quickly because it's you get a sense. That generation also, they had their troubles. There was a lot of uh, assimilation and there was the Baskala movement was taking the hearts and minds of the young people. All of Blaise's brothers and sisters were not religious anymore. And he was planning to go to live with his sister in Paris and go to university, okay? This is my teacher who was uh, later on, ended up staying in Yeshiva Stam Chet Mimim that the Rebbe Nish Musayed had founded. And he ended up, you know, giving his life for the previous Rebbe. He actually didn't, he didn't die, thank God. He had a special blessing, but he was 20 years in Siberia. Many of his colleagues did give their lives to continue Hasidus and continue Yiddishkeit and continue, you know, doing 
the Rebbe's work of keeping Yiddishkeit alive and learning and following, you know, just following mitzvahs in, in Russia was not allowed at that time. So people were, were taken for doing shechita, for, for doing rissim, for doing things like that. In any event, you could you could understand now why there are so many people who come out of Russia or come out of uh, came out after the World War II and they don't know anything about Yiddishkeit because it was so for seventy years it wasn't um, it wasn't uh, wasn't allowed. And then when when he came out when Blazer came out he also he had to keep a low profile for many years. First of all, he didn't have children, so he wasn't well known through his children or grandchildren. And he had to keep a low profile because there was still that threat that people would know, make connections, or he would reveal things or something. They were still afraid of the KGB um, um, finding different people that were connected to the Rebbe in Russia, um, even, even, during, even during the 80s, up until the, the wall, you know, fell and there's a whole new, right, um, in the 90s. And they were allowing Jews to come out of Russia, allowing people to go leave Russia. Until then, there was always the, the threat that some people who were still trapped in Russia, couldn't leave Russia, would get harmed. So in any event, so this, he was an yeshiva storm chitmimim. He told me many stories about how it was to review Friday nights, the Rebbe Shab would say, a mimer, the bachim in the higher grades, and he was one of them. He was in the high, one of the older Bachim, had to review, learn it by heart, and review it by Thursday, the, that coming Thursday, all by heart. And the 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 teacher or the yeah would would like stop one Bachar, he said, Okay, stop you, you go, you, you go next. The next Bachar would have to. So he said they had really they had no Shabbos almost. It was the whole Shabbos was about reviewing the mimer of the Bereb Shad said Friday night, no microphone, right? No. No typographing, no tape recorder, and they needed to remember it. And then afterwards, they would also write it out and handwrite it and keep it. And that's how we have the Maimarim of the Rebbe Rasha. Okay, so that's a little footnote here about the Rebbe's talking about Tamimim. So the Rebbe called them Tamimim. When they founded the Yeshiva, they called it Tomchei Tamimim. Tomchei means like supporters of Tamimim. Tamimim are whole, complete. And the Rebbe says the reason they called it Tamchei Tamim is because they learned Torah of the real Torah and the hidden part of Torah, the Chassidus, whole, complete. They learned both of them. And uh, this is a Nasicha. And it's printed Tafresh Nuntes, Simchas Torah Tafresh Nuntes. Not only that. Not only are they learning the Hasidus in the deeper dimensions, but they're learning it in a way that you can understand it in your mind. Similar to the way they learn the revealed parts of Torah, the sugyos, the questions, answers, so like of Gemara, with the back and forth. Okay, so it's not just we learn like a wow, like idea that's a little bit beyond us that we don't really can't relate to. No, Hasidus is taught there. Like um, like a sugya, like a gemara, questions, answers, back and forth till you get to the to the understanding of what's being said in your mind, in your brain. So what happens when you're learning in your brain? Your mind, your brain, is united with the seichel, the intellect of the pnimius of Torah, the inner dimension of Torah. Um, and like Tanya, it's written in Tanya about Torah, when you're learning Torah in general, so this is the Rebbe saying that when you learn the inner dimensions of Torah, this happens too. Your mind is united with a complete unity, a beautiful, a wondrous unity. There's no such unity like it at all in a physical realm, right? When you're eating something, let's say physical, it's still, it's not as a, you're, or connecting with somebody on a physical level, it's not the same as when you're learning um, a concept and it becomes one with you. Why? Even, see, and that brings my example that I said, even when you're uniting with a um, in, in, uh, husband and wife, being one flesh in a marriage, it's 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 still two separate uh, a husband and a wife. It's two separate entities. Whereas when you're learning something in your mind, it becomes one with you in your brain. Which is similar to the times, of the preparation and what's going to be in the times, our state in the times of Mashiach, where we're all 
be wise, all the Jewish people will be wise, big wise people, it says, will know the hidden secrets. The Yasiku Dazbaba will understand the knowing and the, the knowledge and uh, the das of our creator. So it will be uh, the, the completely whole in the times of Mashiach. But what's going on when we're learning, every time we're learning Chassidus, we're being united with the Shem in our brain, in our in a, a complete unity. Like when we learn Torah, it's, it, it explains there in Tanya how our brain is enclosing the idea, and the idea, the concept is also enclosing our brain, right? So it's it becomes united as one with us, similar to what it will be in times of Mashiach, where all the Jewish people will know the hidden secrets and will will understand Hashem completely. In the, in the most wondrous way, because as a result of it, because I'm right, we'll be engaged with Hashem, understanding deeply in our brain, in our mind. So also the soldier, they're called the soldiers of the house of David, <clears throat> the sold the the yeshiva bachrim of, of the of Tom Chaytamimim of the yeshiva that the Rebbe Shab established. They're also called. He called them the soldiers of the house of David. Uh, which, by the way, Chayala Beis David also is the acronym Chabad. Ches Beis David. Okay, but they're so called soldiers, and there's there was a lot of talk about that also. Like soldiers have to really be engaged, so that's how they were expected to be fully engaged in their uh, commitment to being the students in that yeshiva. So the Rebbe though brings that not that they were totally committed, brings that they win. What does a soldier do? He wins the battles. So they were called chayalim, they were called soldiers, and the way it highlights not that they were working hard, that it doesn't highlight that part, he highlights the fact that they were winning the battles of those who are opposing uh, um, Mashiach. They activate, actually, and they reveal the coming of Mashiach, Ben David, the son of the uh, Mashiach is called Ben David, the son of David. But often the Baruch Hashem Olam Amen Amen in a way that Hashem is blessed forever and ever and ever. Like it's brought out in the end of chapter eighty-nine of Tehillim. Now, I guess this uh, this Chayyala based David, if you look it up, it must be in yeah in the chapter eighty-nine of Tehillim or yeah eighty-nine of Tehillim. There's a footnote over here. Um, okay, the, the okay. So there's there's. A, should we go into the footnote? It's a it's a it's going into the word. Welcome, Alana. Um, welcome, Linda. Welcome, everybody. Wow, nice group. We, we have ten ladies, I think. She has a Yes, ten. Welcome, welcome. We have a minion. Is, first of all, um, is there any questions or any comments so far for me before I get into another footnote? I'll give you a second to mute yourself if you'd like. Okay. okay. So footnote 121. There's the 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 Rebbe is quoting from Psalms from Tehillim. I guess it's chapter 89. You could double check me if you want. Um, that's my guess. Um, it says, "Asher chirfu ikvot mishichecha," that the this this the the tzvimim of the yeshiva, the students of the yeshiva, are here to um, remove the problem of those who are. There's a word chirfu. Chirpa is usually known as chirpa is shame. So those who shamed the 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 heels of Mashiach. So that's the, the quote from Tehillim, that the, the yeshiva, the students of the yeshiva, through their, their learning, the inner dimensions of Torah, they are countering and winning, the Rebbe says, not just counting, they're winning those who are bringing shame to Mashiach. So, and that's Cherfu, Ikvot Mashiachacha, is from Psalms, a quote. So Cherfu, the Rebbe goes into the word Cherfu. Cherfu has in it Rapach, the 288, it has the letters of Apach, which counters, which alludes to the Rebbe says, the 288 sparks of the world of Tohu. Remember we said there's 288 sparks, it's called Rapach Mitzotzim of Tohu, that are in this world that we need to elevate. 
the whole purpose of elevating these sparks, this 248 Rapach sparks, is to reveal the Rucho Shem Mashiach, the, the spirit of Mashiach, which is Merachefet of Neamayim, which is also has the word Charaf, Cherfu, has in it Merachefet of Neamayim means hovering over the face of the water, which we said and we brought up in, in footnote 70 we, at the beginning of this Sicha, the Rebbe quoted this because he quoted how from the beginning of time, from the beginning of creation, there was already the intent of Mashiach in the world, which is the end of was wedged in the beginning, that the whole complete reason for creating the world is Mashiach, is the coming of Mashiach, the revelations of Mashiach. And that's why the spirit of Mashiach was over hovering over the face of the waters already before creation, there was the spirit of Mashiach. And when the word that's used is merachefes, is hovering uh, over is the word Merchavis, which has in it Cherpu or has in it Rapach, has in it this 288 sparks, has in it the the this, the, the letters Ches Reish Pei that we're talking about, which is shaming or the countering of the shaming, taking away the shame of Mashiach. Okay, so it's all connected. Now he's bringing one more word that has Cheref in it. Those who like Hebrew will be wowed by this. Charifus, which is sharpness, charif is sharp, is also from the word uh, cherpa, or, which is, the Rebbe doesn't, yeah, cher, cherpa is shaming, or rapach, which is two and sparks, or merachachas is hovering, and charifus is sharp. They're all the same shorish, all the same letters. And so when we add in learning Torah, the Torah of Mashiach, we learn it in a way of cheruf, charifus. Cher, sharpness. We learn it very deeply and sharply. And this counters the cherp with the shame or brings out the it's it's the it's la mailusa. It's the shame in a way of goodness, meaning it's in a way of holiness, in a way of we're delving in deeply into these ideas. Kharif kharif means to be very um sharp, very deep. Kharif is deep. So we're learning them deeply. Spicy. It's also yeah. spicy. Yeah. Spicy. But in when it says you're Kharif in learning, it means you're a deep learner. I remember I used to have to tell my kids' teachers, because my kids were not like uh, necessarily such textbook learners or memorizing learners. Like a lot of, you know, they couldn't just spit out a lot of psuki, you know. They were, I had to explain to them, my kids are really brilliant and sharp. <laughs> they're Kharif. I would say they're not a Bucky, they're a Kharif. I could, I could tell it to them, these Rebbies in, in their terminology. A Bucky is somebody who knows a lot of things, broad, broad knowledge, like can remember and quote, you know, dates, time, places, and verses. And a Bucky, and that's a Bucky, and a Kharif, which is the word here, sharp is deep, a deep learner, who are very, very brilliant in a deep way. They can really extrapolate and understand and go forward in a, they can analyze, they can um, synthesize, they can do a lot of things with their brain <laughs> that kids who are maybe can remember and regurgitate things very easily, very quickly, um, remember, you know, Mishnah spell Peh, things by heart. And my kids growing up thought that they were not so smart because the textbook learners who knew things by heart and could read very quickly um, seem to be the brilliant kids. Turns out I was right. My kids are very brilliant, <laughs> very sharp and very smart. But it wasn't in, in the way the school system was in their days, it wasn't very apparent. And uh, I had to do, actually, I did testing on them. I had to have them have their IEPs in some of them and had them uh, tested. And it came out that like in math things, my kids were doing math work they, they didn't learn math in like second grade. One of my kids was doing 11th grade math. Uh, he, he reached, you know, he was able to do the, answer all the questions correctly. Not that he knew how to read the, the questions. It was read to him, but he was able to answer up to 11th grade uh, math level in second grade. And, um, and the 11th grade, he got stuck because he couldn't answer because they didn't know what a perimeter. They gave him a, a math uh, question that had to do with... Um, calculating a perimeter and he didn't know what a perimeter was but that what i'm saying is they're the saying kharif is deep and sharp and that's how we're learning chassidus we're going very deep we're learning it in a very deep letter le letter and that's careful in my elusa that's shame to in in a in an advantageous way in the in its pristine in good way meaning 
we're learning Torah of Mashiach in a way of depth which counters the shame. Okay, so cherpu means shame, and the chayale beisavi, the students of the, we're also the students of of the Rebbe, learning Hasidus. We counter that shame. We take we we win over the shame of those who are shaming Mashiach or those who are, um, you know, whatever cherpu equals Mashiach the heels of Mashiach, whatever, however that means, however you want to interpret that, and it's the same letters of the two hundred eighty eight sparks rapach mitzotzes of Tohu, which we said, elevating these 288 sparks, they're, the whole goal of elevating them, revealing Hashem in the world, is to reveal the Ruch Hashem Mashiach, the spirit of Mashiach, which is Merachachas, which hovers on the face of the world, of the, of the water, and the four creation, which is why Hashem put us in this world in the first place, was to do all this, to reveal Mashiach in this world. Okay, and that's what we mentioned at the beginning those who came earlier, I did make um, recordings of most of the classes, I think, of this week. And you can go on my YouTube channel, Beis Chana, with my icon on it, a picture of my face, um, not the other Beis Chanas, there's a few Beis Chanas, and you can get um, the previous classes. And there speaks about this, uh, this whole concept of why the world was created and how we are above the world. Our neshama really comes from beyond the world. Therefore, we deserve all the rewards because we chose, in a way, to come to this world. Hashem consulted with our Hashem, as it says. And so we have free choice about even coming and taking on what we're doing in this world. So we get paid like laborers who deserve to be paid. We're not just, um, you know, have to do it because God created us. And, and we, all these wonderful things. So that, uh, having all this in mind, that we're also above the world, and Hashem is really not, not limited by the world. Uh, and the whole purpose of the creation of the world so that right now, at this moment, we reveal Hashem in this moment. Uh, that's the whole purpose, to reveal Hashem in this world, and which the whole intention and purpose will be revealed wholly and completely in times of Mashiach, but we're doing it now. And there it goes into how we need to have this reward and the revelations right now, just like a, a worker has to get paid the same day. So there, that's also, it's a very fascinating sikha, this one, about how we really, at this moment, can tune into and reveal all the revelations of Geula. And we have we have a responsibility to, even though it says, not that only we can, but we need to, because that's, and it's all one thing, the creation, being in this world, doing our vote in this world, and the revelations of Mashiach is all about revealing Hashem in this world. It's all one thing. And when we know, and we have this total picture at every moment, then it makes our work so much easier, as what Eva says. We, and not only that, it also, it kind of forces Hashem, it makes Hashem have to take care of us physically and spiritually, because if this is the whole point of creation, purpose of creation for us to reveal Hashem now in this moment, in this world, Hashem has to give us, Eva says, Hashem has to give us the tools to make it happen. So he has to give us everything we need physically and spiritually. Um, but he's, when he talks more about physically, we have to have, Lots of hachava, lots of abundance of money and, and health and all, all the things we need to do at Sir Hashem. And so those are the tools to do it. And we have to also get rewarded for what we've done that day right away. But Nervous says specifically, we should not be waiting for the seventh millennium for to get the reward. The reward has to be the same day because, like you said, pay, workers get paid the same day. And so we have the reward, the Rebbe says, we just have to access it, open it, tune into it. So that's that's a, a brief review for those who, because I see there's quite a few ladies here who weren't here each day of this week. So if you want the whole, everything in inside, we have it on record and my YouTube channel, basically. Okay, so here we go. We're almost done with this amazing Sicha. And you could stop me for questions if you want. Um, but we'll, we'll speak about it also at the end. So we, we talked about getting ready for the wedding and that the Chayale Beis David are winning, not just the, uh, you see, the Rebbe also turns things around here. Most of the Sichas, when we're talking about Chayale Beis David, David, the connotation of a soldier in the house, of the house of David is that they fight the battles, they're pushing, they're persevering, they're doing serious nefesh like it was in the previous generation where they had to really, they had to really, really be strong and be willing to give up and sacrifice in order to be able to be connected to the Rebbe and to learn Hasidus. Um, so that was in that generation. But here, 
now that they're ever saying, we're in a different generation. We're now in a tzkufa, the Rebbe says, the time that we're in now, it's also described at the end of chapter 89. We already finished all the work of all the 40 years of work that we've done from when the previous server passed away. So now it's even more. So since then, we've added in the spreading of the wellsprings afterwards in a way, and we've spread the wellsprings in a way that Hashem has given us a knowing heart, Hashem has given us a nine little eyes that see, and those nine lishma and ears that hear. Obviously, we're talking about deeper levels of knowing, deeper levels of sight, and deeper levels of hearing. And um, but 124, the Rebbe says it's connected to Chodesh Elul, the month of Elul, this year, 1991, it was Shnasa where Hashem shows us the wonders, and it's also preparation for the wonders of Bina, of Tavshin uh, and Beis, the wonders of Bina, where the Rebbe says here, the ears to hear, we know, is about seeing and hearing of Chachma and Bina. So like we said, it's not just seeing and hearing physically, it's seeing and hearing a deeper level of Chachma and Bina. Wisdom and understanding. So Hashem, so there was saying over here, it's been 40 years, and now it's been even more, of being able to see things deeply in a way of Chachma and Bina, learning Hasidus more and more deep. Now there was says we're standing at a time that's more connected to the, the paragraph, the Tehillim Psalm 90, which ends with Vina Mashama Lokeno Aleinu. So I was saying we're now in the end where we're already at the verse that relates to us is that Hashem's Nam, Hashem's pleasantness should be upon us. The Nam Hashem, Nam is, Nam is pleasantness, or should be Aleinu upon us. Our hands are are making it happen or are uh, establishing, have been established or established Hashem, depending how you want to translate it. What does it mean? Our hands are established. The Rebbe says it's that Hashem's Shechina is present in the handiworks of our hands, meaning it, it, in those days it was that the, the, base, the Mishkan was established and Hashem dwelled in it. But the Rebbe's bringing that for us too. Everything that we're doing, the Shekhinah now needs to dwell in us, in the handiworks of our hands. Which is the payment for all our work, all our service that we've done. So the Rebbe says we're now in a time where we're already in the, we finished all the work. Like the Rebbe said quite a few times, we've done everything, we've revealed uh, Hashem in this world, in this dark world. We've learned Hasidus, we've spread Hasidus in a way of knowing, hearing, and understanding deeply of our Neshama. And now we're ready for this reward of the Shekhinah dwelling in us, in, in, the, in our handiworks. Is there any questions or comments? Or should, I, should we finish the last paragraph? And then we'll talk. Okay. Number 15. So now that I was going to the instructions, what should we take from this? The pearl in actuality, the mice of action is the most important thing. And one, number one, so what should we do? One, the first time, to publicize services in each and every place that we are now standing at the end and the ceiling of all the work, all our deeds, which we went out to battle the wars of on our upon our enemies, which the Rebbe explained was in the Shema coming down into the world. We're now at the beginning of the period where we're receiving our reward, receiving our payment. Like the Rebbe said that the the the, the zakhar of tzaddikim, um, the reward or payment for the tzaddikim, um, which the Rebbe said. Previously in this talk is not in the seventh millennium. It's it's happening now each day. We can we do receive our reward. So therefore, the Rebbe says, what is the instructions practically? Is that we need to do our service in a way 
that is shayach, that is attuned to or connected to and relates to the days of Mashiach. They're starting with learning Torah that has to do with the Inyanim of Geula Mashiach and the Beis HaMikdash. And more, to learn it in a way of calmness and, and feeling settled. Simcha to live love, joy and gladness of heart. Including making for brains of joy. Especially when making these for brains that are connected with the, the days of the wedding and the, or the days of rejoicing, the Yemei Mishta, the days of, um, of the, right, the Shavah Brachas. Okay. And also including, which in those days they used to, when they made a wedding, they would make um, the minig you saw. The minig was to make a seuda, a, a table, and a meal also for the poor people. They would invite the poor people, and they'd have like a table for anybody, like not relatives or guests, but all the poor people would come to all the weddings and have a place to eat. Similar to what will be in times of Mashiach, which says, "Yimalis chokpina will all be joyous, will be laugh, filled with laughter, our mouths will be filled with." with Joyous laughter, right? Asher b'doin is Hashem as Yado, Kvod Kedushat Moicham Yad Mos, Shishmo Hashem Inu Yitzchak, Hashem Atzchok Vasimcham. The second name of the Friedrich Rebbe was Yitzchak, which is about laughter and joy. The Rebbe says he is the eighth Nasi, the eighth, eighth leader from the Baal Shem Tov, right? As Bikimati Hashmona, as means then, in, um, as is in the future, will our it says as our mouths will be filled with laughter then. And as is the word uh, is letters Alex sign, which is eight, and he's the eighth from the Baal Shem Tov. So this as we're going to say then as means then. Then our mouths will be filled with laughter. So the Rebbe says this is already now, not just in the future. This is now. So number one, there's a, a three and three things to publicize. The first thing the Rebbe says to publicize is in, in this paragraph number one is that we need to already start acting, learning and behaving in a way that is fitting for the days of Mashiach. Connected to it and fitting. So that means learning the Inine Gula Mashiach and to learn them in a way that we're, we're, we're calm and settled, in a way of joy, in a way of forbringance also, making forbringance too. Um, okay, no, similar to the times of Mashiach we'll be filled with joy and laughter, okay? Okay, now number two. So the Rebbe says this is the next thing to publicize in each and every place. Okay, any place. We're not just talking about in the big major cities or in Eretz Yisrael or in you know places that you think might accept this idea. What's the idea we have to uh, this, that we have that we have a shlichus of the yeshiva of Tom Chetmini, which is affecting and drawn down in all corners of the earth in a way of nodla, in a way of their candles that illuminate. That's what they were called. That the Tom Chetmini and Bachem were. Like given this blessing and told that they're like candles which illuminate, like and we're all told that too. So what does it mean that aside from every Jewish home having to be a poem of Torah, prayer, and kind deeds, like we spoke many times, the Rebbe says, and the extra thing that we need now in our times that that each house should be similar, and a, like a, an example of the yeshiva tom chetmimim, the yeshiva that the Rebbe Hashab established, right, in Lubavitch, how do we make our house like a yeshiva from Chitmim, that we learn Hasidus in it. Aside from learning Torah in general, in our homes, the Rebbe is saying we need to learn, right, when we say Torah, Torah, Avedah, and Hulis Chasadim, each home has to have Torah, prayer, and good deeds. The Rebbe says, in addition, the second instruction is that every home, every Jewish home, not just Chabad Hasidim, not just people are connected. It, all areas of the world, all ends of the earth, every home has to be like Yeshiva Tamchitmim and that they learn Hasidus. And it's like, just like they did in the Yeshiva Tamchitmim, they didn't learn just revealed parts of Torah, 
they learn the inner dimensions of Torah as part of the curriculum, okay? So that's number two. Number three, what do we have to befar some to be publicized? Bechol makom makom in each and every place. Advar ishtadut bebintinat tzorchei achag lekol askokim l'shoshim yomut nechag. To people need to work uh, to mishtadot to put an effort to give the needs of the of the of the chag of the of the holiday to all those who need thirty days before the holiday in order that they can prepare for the time of our rejoicing. Mitoch menucha from a play a state of calmness. Okay, zman sim chaseim as sukkus. So to be able to 30 days before Sukkot is the, on the 14th of Elul, Rebbe said, because there's only, it's a, a shorter month, uh, Elul. So to prepare, we start preparing the 14th, which is next week, for Sukkot already, to try to see that everybody has their needs for the holiday, for the Amtav, and they should be able to prepare for the holiday calmly, with joy and gladness of heart, right? Um, right, being being happy that Yantav is coming, not worried and anxious, Yantav is coming, what am I going to do? Where am I going to eat? How am I going to eat? Okay, so like the Kasav says, Like it says, you should eat plenty, you know, fatty food and sweet foods or sweet drinks and give gifts to those who don't have prepared for them. So, so that says even before that, before when it comes to also Rosh Hashanah, we should make sure people have what they need for Rosh Hashanah. So now the final conclusion, Hashem, Hashem should, it should be Hashem's will, whoever gives a bracha. Hashem's will should be that to speaking about this and receive and taking upon good resolutions. We will have this host that immediately Hashem will give to each and every Jewish person everything that they need. From Hashem's open, plentiful, holy, and wide and abundant hand. Especially when it comes to the most important thing, which is what's what do we need most importantly from Hashem? With a true and complete redemption through Mashiach Like we read in the Torah portion, this coming Shabbos in the afternoon in Mincha. That when we'll come to the land of Israel, we will inherit it and sit and dwell in it. And there's some footnotes here I'll do, but I'll just translate the words of the Psukim that I was quoting. When we come to the earth of soul, it says we will take from the fruits of the land, the first fruits, and we'll go to the place that Hashem chooses, which is to, to dwell, bring his name there, which is the base of Mikdash. Until at the end of the parsha that we read in Mecha, we say, Hashkif Hashem, look from your heavens, look from your holy place, Mina Shamayim, from the heavens. Obarech Hasam Chaisisa, bless the Jewish people. And the main blessing there, it says, it starts with the true and complete redemption. To Mashiach. That's the, the main bracha. The main, and so starting with the main bracha of the Gulam Kisra Shlema, immediately Mamish Mamish. So let's read footnote 130. Um, um, 132. But what you do more in detail. And when we come over and 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 we come I have the Jewish people, I think this is from Rambam. I'm not sure because there are the quotes of Rambam at the end here. That there was somebody who was in charge of the, uh, of them to come and announce to the Jewish people, let's go up to Yushalayim to see him. And the, there was somebody who would play an instrument, I guess, and they would play instruments going before them until they came to close Yushalayim. And when they came into the gates of Yushalayim, they would start saying, are, 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 we're standing at the gates of Yerushalayim, and when they came to the Harabes of Mikdash, so when they came to the mountain, they would say Hallelujah, Hallelujah, El Bakotcha. They would sing this this, this Hallelujah, praising Hashem in His holy place. Ad Kol and Shaman, and they would say, you know, the Hallelujahs that we say in, in morning in morning davening. They would say those Hallelujahs until Kol and Shamat Hallelujah, and when they come to the Azara, inside the base of Mikdash. 
he will have been Bashir, the, 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 the Levim would sing out in, in song, the Pasuk, Alvim Hashem Kililitana, Hashem, you've exalted me, you've uplifted me um, uh, from, from the, the depths, from the lowly places. So that's, yeah, that's Rambam Hilchos Bikurim, that's Maimonides, Elaza Bikurim, end of chapter four. So that's footnote 132. And the last footnote, 133, when it says, Hashem, look at us um, from your high place. The word that's used, look, is not the regular word of looking. The word in Hebrew is hashkifa. Hashkifa is a different type of looking. So the, the Yerushalmi, the Gemara says, this way of saying look, and the word hashkafa is the word lashon of bracha, of blessing which is look at us in a way of blessing, which is a way of not just blessing, transforming Klaal Bacha is what's brought in the Medrash. Transfer, like when Hashem looks at us from this place in a way of transformation of, of, of curse to, to blessing. Like it says in the portion of our portion this week, Hashem did not want to listen. He transformed the kwala, the curse to blessing. Why? Because Hashem loves us. And we remember at the beginning, uh, that he spoke about this at the beginning of this sicha, where he says, and one, we quoted one of the footnotes that discusses it, that Bilam wanted to curse the Jewish people, and he had all the rational, good, welcome from a good reasons to curse the Jewish people. And Hashem didn't even want to listen to his rational debate and logical conclusions or whatever he said that was uh, because Hashem loves us beyond rationale, beyond reason. And so Hashem didn't even listen to Bilam, didn't even pay attention to what he was saying, didn't even go into the logical uh, explanations and just loves us and uh, beyond that. So that's um, so they're just saying all these blessings should happen and are, are happening and should happen immediately now now. Okay. Any questions or comments? I wanted to tell you about um, Re Rabbi Merahai's uh, nephew, his sister's son. He went to Yeshiva and then he applied for, I don't know what university, but he applied for university. They said, you can't come because you didn't go to high school. <laughs> you went to Yeshiva. So they said, okay, fine. Okay. We'll give you the test. Yeah. We'll show you how you can't come to here. So he took the test and he scored the highest that anyone has ever scored on the entrance imagine. test. It was, it was, imagine. yeah, it's true. Yeah. Broad learning. Yeah. Yes, yes. I can imagine. Okay, so I think you're telling me that because of what I said about my some of my kids. That's, yeah. Some of my kids were book smart, too. But uh, some of them were more, uh, actually, the ones who weren't as book smart are very, very sharp and deep, deeper even. But I think you can be both. Yeah, they're both. Yeah, they they caught up later on in life. But when you yeah. the the one who wasn't able to read in second grade, well, he had trouble reading. He was the one who was who who tested. <laughs> I tested in second grade, Amazing. and he was doing a math problems. You know, in his brain, Amazing. he didn't even know his he didn't even know his his times table or multiplication table, and he was just calculating. You know, two plus two plus two kind of thing to get it to answer the the. the question logically in his brain so so yes yeah, so so we're 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 here students of some treatment we're hard we're sharp we're deep we're learning it in a way that it's um countering any shame Herpa is shame any any shame is gone with our we can read what we was saying we can read a little bit into the lines is that he's saying Learning Hasidus it clears away the shame of those who are shaming Mashiach. When we understand Hashem deeply through Hasidus, yeah, nobody can shame Mashiach. No, nobody can have any bring anything that could shame Mashiach, God forbid, because we have all the understanding, all the insight, all the answers, all the right, right? Delve into it deeply, understanding Hashem, understanding these concepts, and understanding Mashiach. So that's our job to learn Hasidus deeply. So that was basically. You know, saying this is it. This is your reward. This is your job. But it's not a job that's 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 like a job that's a hard, difficult job. This is who we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take so care. Who we are. Yes. Learn yeah. who we are. Learn who we are too. Learn who we are. Yes, we're discovering who we are. <laughs> so I decided to say good
um, that pops up on the screen. Anybody else with a question or a comment? Sherry, you want to say something? I see you moving around. Thank you for joining on camera. It's good to see your smile. And Thanks. thank you for sharing your gemach with us yesterday. I'm still still thinking about that gemach. And uh, oh. <laughs> anybody want to share something they got from this class that they feel is like uh, spurring them or pushing them to, not pushing, or inspiring them, I should say, to another level of awareness or understanding or connection or achlaka? Uh, I have one more thing. Um, yep. They did something, I won't say what song or such, but they learned that what we hear, and hear, this was for saw, a song, what yeah. we hear stays in us. And they proved it by having people think about this particular song, several people, and they could record the song from just them thinking about it. And in the brain space. Oh, really? Yes, and I heard the song. At first, I heard the song, and then I heard that recording from their brain. It sounded sort of like a cave when it came from their brain, but you could recognize the song just thinking about it. I, I, I'm blown away by that. Oh wow! And what it, it see, tells me is they we were able think, to pick up on the brain waves. Yes, it's like a machine. It's like a machine. Interesting. And that oh. inspires me from what we learned today. Is like we should learn deeply. Yes. Let's just think then what our brain is actually, actually, actually momish filled with. Yes. If, if, so you're saying, right. It's actually, okay, so that was what they were saying. It becomes one with us. We become yes. one with Hashem, one with the Torah, the inner dimensions of Torah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's part of our brain. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. part of who we are. Hashem becomes part of us. Mm -hmm. um, through, yeah, learning it deeply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what they were saying. So we, we, w w the Chiddush of the Rebbe in the Sikh about that is, is that in Tanya, the Rebbe just talks about Torah in general. What the Rebbe is saying is in our times, we're learning Hasidus in oh. such a way that it's integrated into our brain, that we understand it. It's the depth of understanding. So oh. then at that, we have that unity with Hasidus in a way that we never had um, before. That's and, way better and deeper than mm -hmm. just a song. Yeah. <laughs> Words and you know, the melody. Yeah. I'm but sure you forgot something. Not you left something out that that if we learn Basimcha, then we get um, all these matanot, yes. and we we pull from the future. Yes, um, into we get all the um, rewards from the future yes. when we Basimcha. We're all Basimcha, right? Yes. Yes. How else could we do that besides Basimcha? I'm saying right now we're learning together with Simcha, so um, put your hands out and we'll get the rewards. Yes. yes. I'm sending them all to everybody. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. So, yeah, so that was the first instruction. We read it from the Rebbe. The, 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 the first instruction was to learn Chassidus deeply with joy and menucha and calmness, like we will in times of Mashiach, where we will be fully, fully excited and happy. <laughs> And full of laughter when we're learning. When we're learning, sometimes you know, it, uh, you know, I'm, 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 when I'm listening or learning something, I start, I do start laughing sometimes. You do. <laughs> it makes like something that's and there's a novelty reveal that's so yeah. amazing, right? It's like I uh, sometimes I I'll, I will laugh. I don't know. It's well, from a surprise. Uh, we're in the time of Males Chofino. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not, we're not thinking Hashem, bring it to us. We're in the time of Males Hokinu. That's what the Rebbe just said also. Yes. It's, it's, so, said, it's like the first be the future, but now Hashem is here now. May may everybody, may we all feel it and, and experience it and yes. enjoy it. So, right. so yeah. So that's like what you're saying, enjoying it. So the Rebbe wants us to learn in a way that we really enjoy it. Like we enjoy the, enjoy the, 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 it, it's like right when you learn something, it's such a surprise and such a wonder and such an awesome thing. You, 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 you right? You laugh. You are like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> you start laughing, right? So that's I, you know, I don't know if it was on your class yesterday or a different, one, but there was also the same Devar Machut and the Rebbe was saying, we're in a circus and we should, and um, even the evil is, you think they're evil, but they're really doing some kind of a voda. But um, he said we're, we can sit and laugh at them of what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the it was, it, maybe we're going to come up to that in the next sicha. But we just oh, I think I learned it. Oh, oh. 
I think it's one ahead of you. But he's saying we're what God is taking is gonna take us all to a circus and we're in a and we're just um watching a circus that the evil is just um a bunch of circus people and they're all coming they have no power and they're all coming down. That was really I vaguely remember something like that. I don't remember the exact uh I could ask what it was. Now I remember where. Yeah, it's um I don't remember the exact uh, word circus, but maybe it was there. Does any if anybody else remembers, you can. How do you, how would you say circus in Hebrew? I don't remember the word circus. Um, I I you know what I I can ask the person that just taught it. It might be the next. I can ask her what sicha was, but it's next um it touched on on these things too that we're learning also. Okay. Good. But uh, but they said he said Hashem, you know, don't be afraid. Everything's okay. It's all the the evil is nothing, and you can, we can laugh at it. That's what yeah. uh, I was saying. So no, that's kind of cute. Of you you can way. think of the clown car. You know how people keep getting out of it and getting out of it. The clown car. Have you heard of that term? Clown car. Uh, I I haven't I haven't heard of it, but I've seen it. You know. Yeah. Keep popping yeah. out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, what happens is there's a little car and somebody gets out and then somebody else and somebody else, like there's 10 yes. people in this tiny little yes. car. So it would be a clown car because it's really impossible to have that many people in the car. So it must be a clown car. I don't know why. Well, I just saw last night a, a, a short video, I'll post it, I think, on the nourishment, uh, a priest putting on tefillin. Oh, <laughs> Maybe so that trying. also it makes you laugh, right? Whoa, like wow, it's like a wondrous thing. There was um a Yeshiva Bachar was putting on tefillin in, in the old city, and a mm -hmm. priest comes with uh with his you know he was a tourist guide, I guess you know bringing his mm -hmm. group of people to to see, and he had like a little microphone on his you know mouth, and he had the the black hat and black garb and and. As some he told one of these boys in the bathroom was doing he says, you know, my parents were Holocaust survivors. <laughs> well, yeah. So the boy um, asked him, so were well, they you Jewish? Know, so he's Jewish. Yes, yeah, so they said it was were they Jewish? He said, of course, you know, they're Holocaust survivors. Oh, and he's a priest. So, yeah, he was a priest with his congregation. So wow. he said, Oh, perfect. Let's put on slow and make up our mitzvah. And he put on there's a video of him, and he said the bracha with him. <laughs> well, you know what? Um one of the last popes, one of that the one that stepped down, he found out that he was actually he was also a Holocaust survivor. That his parents had put him into a uh, place, and he became in a Christian place, and uh, he was raised Christian. So he found that all out. I guess someone almost was dying, and they went and told him, and he started learning Torah. And he had to leave. He didn't tell anybody why, but he had to leave because they found he was going to so many Torah classes and missing the important things. And I, I also mess, met a, a priest that um, that also was Jewish, that his parents were Holocaust survivors wow. um, a, uh, from yeah. Ireland. Big, you know, big, well-known priest, and he was Jewish. Yeah. Jewish. So when the, when the Rebbe says every Jewish home, every corner of the earth needs to be a Tanchet in Yeshiva and learn Hasidus, it's pretty amazing also. Like we're seeing it, everybody's learning Hasidus all around the world, and every corner. It's not just, you know, when the Rebbe said this, it was not, there was no internet yet, and um, it wasn't so. It now we're seeing it actually happening. Everybody's learning Hasidus, priests, <laughs> and non-Jews, Jews, assimilated uh, people who had back. Everybody's learning Hasidus. Everywhere, all four, all corners of the earth are learning Hasidus so easily. So that's this. Whatever the Rebbe said here is happening now in its full form. We're ready. We're ready for the English language. I really like the fact that you're flipping, flipping it, and not just laughing with the joy of the Hasidus and the learning, but actually laughing at the craziness of the world and not getting getting um, taken in by it, but know that it's. Al Hashem, and it's just like you know nothing. So it was interesting as we, you were speaking about this and laughter and everything. I don't know. This news flash just came up, like the last laugh, like something with Trump or whatever. But it was just like it was just that fact that let's just laugh at you know. Don't get <clears throat> afraid. Don't get 
overwhelmed by it. Just take it as as like this is, you know, both ways. The the Hasidus coming in and the and the kedusha, but also the stuff that doesn't look like kedusha. It's really just has no power. It's just like a, it a just left. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know, meant just, to be a little like, show for us, a little circus. For people us. working very hard. They're working. It's like it is funny to see every angle that people are working at. You know, well, too bad they're not. You know, base rock action. They should all work that hard with learning Torah in the end. Yeah, the you know the the the, the knowing Hashem and learning Torah now is in a completely different way. It's 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 not such hard work and effort. People, when they're scrolling on their phones and being entertained, they, they're getting a shear, you know, they're getting a deep lesson. They're getting a, the depths of Hasidus that we never, you know, previous times you had to be on a very high level to get. So <laughs> it's not like, you know, people have to make a conscious decision. I'm going to force myself to go learn now to a shear. It's more of like, wow, this is an exciting thing I'm going to open up to right now. And I enjoy it and I want it. And I feel it's, giving me life and, and and a new lease on life, a new way of being. And so it's, it's, it's a different type of, of like, yeah, it's an enjoying, enjoying life, enjoying it. those who are really wealthy, both, you know, wealthy physically, wealthy spiritually, wealthy. Those are the people who are really learning Hasidus because they want it. It's not like like it was in the old days that it seemed like a, this is going to be a big hard chore and then we're going to burden ourselves with lots of commandments and we're going to have to be very isolated from the things we enjoy and it's it's a whole different mentality now it's, it's people are being who they are fully engaged with learning Hasidus and they're being who they are more wholesomely because they're learning Hasidus and it's it's organic it's Hashem is with them as one on wherever and however it's not like either or like you have to leave the world in order to be, be holy. That's that's gone. They have to change that whole mentality. We're engaged in whatever we're engaged with. We're in the world, and we're feeling good at every little aspect of what we're engaged in. So yeah. it's okay. It's okay that people are, you know, all over this dispersed all over the world and all kinds of interesting things and other things because they're that's where they're revealing Hashem. Even if they're engaged in uh, whatever, making movies, <laughs> whatever it is. They're revealing Hashem in that area. That They're meant to be there and to reveal Hashem where they are. Like that guy, Alyssa, was that you who sent the singer at the ball game? The, the, the yeah. Hospital. Yeah, but I'm saying even if somebody, let's say, is working in the in the movie industry, they have a role there to reveal Hashem at that moment. It, well, it, this guy, he sang at that, at that ball game and everybody yeah. clapped really long. Yeah. So he showed what it could be for a Jew to sing a song. <laughs> Yes. I mean, he said, wow, you could be here instead of in your little uh, shtetl and yeah. spreading who you are and being who you are. Yeah. Yeah, the world He's is very... a famous uh, Jewish singer. But yeah. it, it is incredible that um, that they chose him with his payas and his sisters to come yeah. and sing. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's so what's they... going on in our times. The, 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 people want the Jewish people to stand up for who they are and what they are and reveal their essence and reveal their talents and reveal their understanding and right be lights to illuminate they want us to teach to teach to spread to reveal to not be afraid of <laughs> right of, and it all shows because it's all in us and it doesn't mean that we have to show everything at one time but it shows when we do with little things it shows what's in us mm -hmm. all of what's in us you know mm -hmm. That's what we learned in one of the past lessons. Yes, yes, yes. And when they ask for more, they give them more. Yeah, that's right. You want more? I'll show you more. <laughs> Good. Well, have a wonderful, wonderful day, wonderful Shabbos, Gilda Dika Day, Gilda Dika Shabbos, and all these brachas of the Rebbe should be revealed and through us. Amen. With us. And uh, thank you all for being here. And, so next week we're not learning, time. and I'm yeah I'm I'm coming back the following week on on Wednesday, so I probably won't be able to necessarily learn on that week. So probably next week Thursday, okay. Oh, you oh you're coming back that soon, so that's interesting. Because it takes two days to no, I'm saying I'm leaving on on, on Monday night, so 
so this coming Monday night. So I'm, I'm not going to teach next week. And the following week, I'm only coming oh. back on a, um, coming back on a Wednesday. So gotcha. we'll learn on a Thursday. I don't the know. The following week. Yeah, I'm After coming back week. on a Wednesday morning. Yeah, so I'm really, I'm, I'm going to be there only for eight days, but it takes like two days to travel to Australia. So right. it will be like more than, it'll be more than a week. Okay, I'm hey. sorry. Oh. But I don't want to commit because it's a whole different time zone. I don't know how it's going to work with timing. But mm -hmm. um, if, if you ladies want to keep learning, you can use my Zoom account. Just log in. It's always open, I think. Right? You can Zoom in. Do I have to be on the Zoom for it to to work? I think you do. I do? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I know that on mine, they can't come to No, me. with the link, we can... Come on. Link, but I'll go on. Yeah. You can come on. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's nice. Okay, good. So you could always uh, get together if you want and learn together. Yeah. Uh, Karen, you know what? If you if you're inspired in your learning and you want to post uh, and you actually record a little bit, um, then we'll listen to. Thank you. Okay. Blue Netter. No, no, no pressure. Anyway, enjoy what Hashem. Incredible. Hashem Sunny. One of your 40 uh, journeys to Australia. Yes. What What did you say? Are you asking a question or are you making a comment? You said it's one of your 42 journeys. Oh, one of my 42. Going to Australia. Okay. You okay. see some um, platypus. Oh, Look fine. for some platypus there. A platypus. I don't know what that is. It's an animal. It's a cute animal. A platypus. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, if you can get if you can get to an aquarium, they have the most beautiful um, seahorses. These these things that are not, are not in this world. They're the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I think they have them in Australia. Are if they you colorful? are, they yeah. colorful. Pardon? They're colorful. Is that why? <clears throat> yeah. No, not just colorful, but they have wings all over them. They're Ooh. like they. Uh, Blue Nedger, I'll look for some pictures. You you will not believe it. I've saw I've seen some and I I I was I couldn't believe it. it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Um, you know what, Blue Nedger, I'll post um It's okay, it's okay. I, I'm I'm just going along with whatever they're doing. I'm not uh I'm not uh, instigating any <laughs> I'm not gonna look for a platypus. Okay. Uh, okay whatever fine. is going on. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm trying to connect with my you know, my family, my grandkids and just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I just, I'm kind of like, oh, be, gonna be open, whatever happens, kind of thing. Enjoy the. That'll be great. It's because yeah. then it'll all be a surprise and it'll all be joyful. Yes, yes, exactly. And we'll be opening up our mouths in laughter, right? Ah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'll see again and uh, safe yeah. travels. I mean, thank you for travels. Me. And I guess we're gonna focus on the Yudalid you know, coming up, that that's the time that you really start feeling the simcha because you're connecting with, with Sukkot. It's like a very powerful day. So just, so that's a big focus day. Yeah. Oh, man. Thank you. I'll, 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 I'm going to remember that because it's my grandson's birthday. Oh. Yes. So God, God willing, we'll have all the powers of Elul each and every day. Each and every moment will really be a powerful moment and opportunity of connection and in a way that we'll have all the rewards right now. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Take care. Be well. Yeah.